It's Our Story, Harriet McBride Johnson, presented by the ADA Legacy Project. Family, Disability, and Preparing for College, Part 13 of 29. Uh, my family's fairly chaotic, and which I think was um, kind of a lucky break for me. I did not have overprotective parents. Um, I'm one of five children, and we were largely kind of expected to fend for ourselves. And that had advantages and disadvantages, but I think for a disabled child, that can really be kind of an advantage to be expected to fight your own battles and deal with your own mess and, you know, get, get things done. There was a certain amount of stress in the early years when the doctors had them believing I was apt to die any minute and um, periodic bouts of illness. I think on the whole, I was less trouble to my parents than my four siblings um, because they kind of knew where I was and what I was doing. The, the disability did limit the ease with which I could get into trouble. I went to a non-disabled high school. And um, what happened was when I was 13, I was basically kicked out of the Crip school. And coincidentally or not, I was in the middle of a campaign to get the teacher fired. And the same teacher called my mom and said, we cannot teach her anymore, which may have been true. But anyway, at that time, this was 1970, before what is now IDEA, the public schools offered one day a month of homebound instruction. And none of the private schools, parochial schools, would even talk to my parents about taking me when they found out I could not go to the bathroom unassisted. It didn't matter that I had been restricting my fluids for years and don't go to the bathroom during the day. I still don't. Um, and, uh, but none of that mattered. They wouldn't talk to me. But it happened that my mother, again, the South Carolina way, had a very dear friend on the faculty of one school. And she basically agreed to handle any difficulties I might bring with me. And so it's, it was a um, college preparatory school. In fact, its name was College Preparatory School, that where, where normally you had to take an entrance exam and blah, blah, blah. And they let me in anyway. And um, I had spent all my years at Crip School basically writing book reports, because that's what I like to do. So that's not a bad foundation for going into the ninth grade anywhere. And they kind of assume you don't know anything else. And you know, so I, I did that curricula through the 11th grade. And then I went to a college where my mother taught. And again, this was before Section 504. And it was the only accessible college in South Carolina. It was a Baptist school, and they had decided to make it accessible, you know, from some sense that this was a Christian thing to do. No legal obligation. And so they happened to be accessible, and my mom was on the faculty, and I wasn't asking to stay in the dorm. That would have been impossible. So I was able to go there. And that school was actually a lot less fancy than the high school I had gone to. It was you know, an open admissions kind of place. And so I was, you know, very well prepared by that time. Be inspired. Be informed. Be involved. We plus you equals power, passion, pride. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.com or the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.